Right there. That's perfect. Big smiles, both of you. Good. I'm Deborah Roberts, and I've been married to Al for 25 years. Uh, I'm Al Roker, and I've been married to Deborah, I guess, for 25 years. Whatever she said. <laughs>
we did the biopsy, and they made a follow-up appointment right there. So, you know, so it was already scheduled, so I didn't think it was a big that deal. there was going to be a big deal. But if Al had told me, and particularly as a woman, and a woman who goes through mammograms, and I have a history of breast cancer in my family, and I've had some you know, uh, unusual mammograms from time to time, I know that if the doctor says, come on in, I want to talk to you about the results, I know that's not good. Although it was very odd because, you know, I was thinking uh, uh, five minutes before the doctor walked in, I felt, you know, okay. And then he says it, and you're like, oh, I've got cancer, but I, I still feel the same. It's very odd. Uh, and then, again, because I know how Deborah is and how much she cares and how much she loves me, that I thought, oh, boy, I'm, uh, I'm trying to think. I'm going to tell her this, but not tell her, you know, so that she, uh, the, because I know. So she, I won't kill you. As a young, yeah, if, if the cancer didn't kill me, she would, you know, I mean. <laughs> uh... Last November, roughly six weeks after his cancer diagnosis, Al underwent a successful five-hour surgery to remove his prostate and several lymph nodes. And this January, his latest blood work brought more good news. I'm doing fine. You know, we had the, uh, uh, did the PSA blood work uh, first week of January, and the good news is uh, it came back as uh, with a 0 .05 or lower than that. So he said that's considered undetectable and so it's every six months I'll get blood work and that'll be for the next five years and if it you know stays clear then it's it's you know blood work uh, uh, once a year so you know you, you know you're still I mean look the the doctor said he felt pretty good about it and then but you know you're still holding your breath until you get the the blood work back and that you know when that then it was kind of like okay you know, now I can breathe no doubt, Al's had a rough road since his September diagnosis, but it would have been infinitely worse had Deborah not been by his side every step of the way. Well, you know, look, it, everybody needs an advocate, you know, and you know when you're, you know, somebody you love happens also to be your your best advocate. That's you know that's just a bonus. That that can make all the difference, you know. And or if it goes the other way, you know, thankfully, so far no, so that's good. Um, but it, it, had it not been the best of news, um, you know, I, knowing that Deborah was there would have been, you know, uh, one of those great sources of comfort. And it really is a game changer because you suddenly, at least for me, I began to look at Al, you know, through, you know, sort of a different lens because not only am I trying to help him and be his partner and be an advocate, but I love this man. I love this man. And I just remember just looking at him and just sort of thinking about you and just sort of seeing us and our life and just sort of seeing everything sort of pulsate through you as you were sitting there taking all of this in. And it was it was emotional. It was very emotional for me because I, you know, you, you, you think that, you know, you let your mind go there. You know, what if he is not going to be here with me much longer? You know, you really let your mind go there and, and, and you cherish and you clutch and you hold on and... It just, yeah, yeah, that, uh, you know, your heart just sort of, I think, grows bigger. No question. I think for us, I mean, for me, you know, so much of marriage, so much of love and relationships is about just showing up. I mean, I wake up every day determined to keep going. It's a decision. And I think it's easy to just say it's romance and that'll get us through and so forth. That's all lovely, but it is a decision, I think, a daily decision to, to keep trying, to be there, to be devoted to each other. And as I said, to try to learn. I try to learn from Al every day. I, I think we just, I'm willing to say sorry. I'm willing to say, I, maybe I didn't do this right. Let's try to figure out what you are getting at and what you're going for. And I think vice versa. I think we're learning to not only talk to each other, but to just keep giving each other the benefit of the doubt. And I think that's huge. I think that's huge. And I think in, in some ways, when you have kids, younger kids, uh, it's easier to paper over or ignore the issues 
because you know you're so busy, you know, making sure they've got their homework done, they've eaten, they're, you know, they're still alive when they get up in the morning, all that stuff, you know. And then as they get older and they're more self-sufficient, it's the two of you. Uh, that's when I think, in a way, the 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 work really matters, and you realize that it 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 is work. You know, I mean, yes, you love each other, and but you know, it's 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 work, and it's talking, and it's knowing that uh, you're not always going to be happy with the other person and the other person's not always going to be happy with you. And I think it's an ebb and flow. Some days you're giving in more and the other person is, is getting more and, and, and you know, then it, it flips you know, because it's a, it's a constant ebb and flow. But at the end of the day, I love this man. I love us. I love us. And I'm determined to cheer us and to be there for us and to make us work yep. and to make us a priority.